I'm at Mule with Mule Studio, and we work in network. I am your host for the 2023 Young Wood Pro. For our first video, I decided we're going to do something simple. All of the submissions for this contest are photos of your finished work pieces. Finished, not half finished, not three quarter finished, not even seven eighths finished. Finished work pieces, we'll know. They're all gonna be put online to be voted on. So I thought it'd be a good exercise to give you some tips and some tricks on how to get some photos of your work that honors your work in the best way possible and helps us look at it the way it deserves to be looked at. Okay, but not only that, this is also a learning experience about something called salesmanship. Icky, I know. You know, I'm a, I'm a woodworker. I, I hate this aspect of work. <laughs> but I have to do this, and I have to do it well enough, at least, to be able to continue the privilege of doing the parts of the work that I love, okay? So, it's a big deal. What is the point? Make something amazing, and then you present it to a world that they can't even really look at it right. You're selling yourself short, and you're not gonna make as much money. It's hard to sell stuff like that. And you gotta sell stuff if you wanna stay in business. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of photography and some, just a couple little tips, okay? First is clutter. As you can see, the only thing in the shot is the piece I want you to focus on, and the wall piece. That's it. Typically, this area of my studio is packed full of already finished furniture. A lot of times clients come by, They'll you know, point and I grab it, they look at it, sometimes they buy it, everyone's happy. But for this video, I cleared it out. To, just to show through example, that the space itself being only occupied by what I want you to see and how much easier it is on your eyes. You're probably picking this thing apart right now. And I'm making it easier for you to do that because that's the goal. Clutter's not helping you. There's other ways you can get rid of clutter. Um, you can do like a, a false wall, you can do a sheet or some sort of, you know, like, you know, matted back screen. Mm. Or you can, you know, have it removed digitally. Not very cheap. Um, I'm old school, and for this, I just, you know, I picked up stuff, and I lifted it, and I moved it. Is it more work? Yeah. But if you're not willing to go a couple extra steps to get something into a better position to sell, <laughs> and you're going to succeed, maybe. All right, next one is angle. So a lot of people like to shoot their work head on, you know, straight on. And some pieces, that's great. Um, but I encourage you to play with it a little bit, okay? So maybe your work, you know, has something like this where there's a lot of sculptural dimensional work going on, right? So it's hard for the viewer on straight on sometimes to see that depth. And if I'm entering something like this, I want the judges to see the sculptural elements. That shows creativity, expertise, craftsmanship. I mean, the details where, where walnuts peeking through, like, these, these parts matter. So maybe, and not always, but I encourage you to try, change your angle. Maybe change from where you're taking the picture, but also you change the angle of the piece. Move it around. You can still capture the whole piece and get everything in there. But when you do that, the shadows can help you kind of accentuate what you're trying to show somebody. It's worth messing with, because sometimes I've had some of my best picture results by moving the piece around a little bit and keeping my camera fixed, okay? Now, let's say that the angle part's not doing it for you. Well, here's the photography best friend of all time, lighting. Lighting from anywhere besides above can really be a great way to help emphasize a piece, okay? It helps draw the eye in, it helps you show dimension and angle. So look at this guy. I'm sure since that lighting clicked on, you see it differently. Maybe better, maybe worse, I don't know. But usually, if you play with your lighting and move it around, and you get several shots, you can find a nice little kind of happy spot in there where it's really helping your piece jump on that screen. Now what if you combine the two? Angle and light. Also powerful. So you can move this around, and as I move it, I'm trying to be slow, you can see how it changes the ability to see the shadows and the depth and dimension. These are all really useful tricks. Some might not work for you, but some will. I encourage you to try because there'll be different points and different pieces in your career where you've got to come up with different ways to showcase your work. Now let's say that um, your expertise or, or what it is in your piece you want to show us is more based on a finer detail, okay? Like a smaller part of the piece. You want to be able to show us 
but at the same time, you still have to take a picture of the whole thing, right? So look at it. So this piece is an example. This is a velvet um, inlay inside the relief, okay? That's a very small detail, especially when it's black velvet inside of um, black dyed white oak. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna wanna get that camera to focus on that one point. Maybe use a little light, maybe a little angle, but also using that focus. You can do it on your smartphone, or your Android, or whatever, Apple, whatever you got. Or if you got a little cash or have a friend that's got one, you can borrow an old school, good old manual camera. I keep one around, I have an old Nikon that I've used, actually used on shooting these, because I just needed that fine tuned focal you know, spot on these pieces while still getting the whole piece in the shot. Another thing is hardware. You know, maybe you made your own hardware. I didn't make this, I can't take credit. That's still got Sune, um, solid, stainless steel, bevel, handled, it's gorgeous. But let's say I made it. I'm definitely gonna want that in the shot. From a sales perspective, I absolutely want the clients to see this. So for this one, maybe I want both scenes. So I'm gonna put that focus right here. Maybe move it around a little bit to see if maybe that focal point of the lens can grab a little bit of both. I encourage you to try some of these things. I think it is worth it. It can help your picture be so much better. And if your picture is a good quality, it's helping your odds to win the contest. You know, cash prize, a brand new free machine from Grizzly. But also, it's gonna help you sell your products better down the road. And if you, you've gotta sell in order to stay in business. That's, that's how this works. <laughs> So that's that for today. I'm gonna to offer you a quick little shop tip. We're gonna do this every video um, now and every forthcoming. Just little pro tips I've learned along the way that they're small, but maybe you haven't heard of ever thought of and might help you today. Today is actually a product, but not one in which I'm using it and how it's intended to be used. <laughs> These are mini chisels. See them? A little bitty. Micro chisels. I bought these at Grizzly uh, about 10 years ago of the Springfield store. And I found myself using them to clean up glue. Like when it's still, you know, after I've got it clamped and everything's good and it's set and I've got a little residue coming through on all the joints, especially a lot of joints and they're in tight spots. Um, while it's still wet or at least pliable or you know, in that kind of semi-dry state, you know, it's kind of rubbery. These, these guys will take it out quick. And it's so much more accurate than me in there with like a little towel or you know scrap wood or something. I mean, especially if they're sharp. They're not gonna mar up your workpiece because you're gonna put it right here on the 45. You're gonna scrape down and clean it. Other side, scrape down, clean it. Simple, 10, 20 bucks, I don't even remember. I mean, maybe 20 minutes extra work time. But man, I'll take that every time over missing some glue lines that make the workpiece a pain to get through and out the door to get paid. Um, if you miss, you're in there sanding by hand with sandpaper, or, or even worse, you go in to finish without seeing it until you put the clear coat on, then all of a sudden that glue mark is still there and it pops up and you gotta take it back out. It's just, so 20 minutes, a couple bucks, small sacrifice, worth it. Every apprentice I ever had has always had the same reaction when I break these out. <laughs> I mean, and I think they all went out and bought some. So it, it's a really useful thing that I have found that has is, is really improved my accuracy and efficiency. And just, good Lord, my mental state. I don't have to worry about stuff coming out of glue being just an absolute pain. So that'll be all for today. Thank you, Light. I also want to say a special thank you to my lighting specialist today. Uh, this is my daughter, Phoenix. Say hi. Hello. And uh, we want you guys to stay tuned. There'll be more videos come. Thanks for tuning in.